thanks for coming back. This is part two of a two-part video on my advert, The Beat Goes On, and we're looking at post-production. If you haven't seen part one, make sure to do that first. I've put a link right below, so hit that first. Uh, let's pick up where we left off. Here we go. This is a good example of using a, a power window. Um, so if we go into the middle of this clip here, the same logic as the clip before, except now I've added also this face node, which as you can see, if I click it off, is making a big difference um, to bringing back the exposure in Reese's face here. Um, so that's off and that's on. And what did I do in that node? Well, I grabbed one of these, which is a little power window and I applied it to Reese's face and then I went to the tracker and what's amazing about this tracker is you literally just hit play and it tracks the face through the whole shot that quickly and it's just one of the best trackers in the world and a complete lifesaver. Um, now I can take the actual tracker off and if I click here you will see um, what that was doing and I think really it was just a case of um, pushing the mids here so I've just hit reset so you can see that off and then undo so you can see what that was doing and then that tracks all the way through the shot which is just really great and it keeps his face nice and bright throughout the whole shot. Um, let's see any other good grades to look at. Again this is just a case of the LUT, a face tracker and then a bit of white balance. Really really simple stuff here. Last shot at the end here and I wanted this to be um, a bit more moody so what have we got we've got the LUT <clears throat> and it was coming out very warm so before that I then brought the exposure down again I did a tracker in the face and I basically pulled all the color out of his face so I thought that would be a cool move um, because essentially he's just been hit and he's lying dead in the road so what else is that and then the last thing that I had here was a white balance thing just to really cool it off and that contributes to the look overall. Um, so that's the grade. Um, so these are the LUTs that I used, uh, Impulse LUTs, fantastic, and they are matched to the camera that you're using, so it's very easy to chuck them on and sort of have a play around with, with what works for you. Um, next up is the Vashi Visuals Vashimorphic, um, sort of fake 40 mil anamorphic bend uh, After Effects plugin. Let's go straight over to that and here it is. It comes in in HD, in UHD, 4K. Um, this guy does amazing stuff for the community and he's given this away for free and it's a really fantastic way to, again, take your spherical footage to another level. Um, I found that the, the preset uh, was a bit heavy for me um, and so I tweaked it, but I'll just take you through the different layers. So effectively, we have the uh, footage layer. Then the next layer is like corner blur. You can't see it very well on here, but effectively it sort of blurs the edges, which anamorphic lenses often do. Then you have the vignette layer. I disabled that for mine because I'd already graded it. Then you have the black and white test pattern, which just shows you how this layer works, which is sort of the most obvious of all of the elements. And this is just bending your footage to hell so that it has that sort of 3D mumps effect. Um, and then this finally is the aspect ratio bars. So I didn't want mine to be as crazy as Vashi's preset, so I just slightly made the um, edge curves a bit lesser, but effectively this is the graded footage um, straight out of Resolve, and um, that's not doing anything, and then basically I just put the bend on there. Um, so this adjustment layer is the corner blur, and if you have a look at the texture of the road, you'll see that it's just blurring the bottom. Um, you can't see it on this frame at the top, but it is also blurring the top of the frame. You'll probably see it quite nicely about here, yeah. So it's blurring the top of the frame with this layer. It's basically like a, a vignette for focus um, that just sort of helps guide the eye towards the center of the frame by slightly defocusing the top and the bottom. And that's why I love real anamorphics so much is, is those sort of weird and wonderful artifacts. And then this is a good frame to show you what the main part this filter is doing, which is this adjustment layer. It's really bending the footage. And what's great is I know I'm delivering 239, so um, I'm, I'm completely fine to, to bend up like that and get this, this, these black bars at the bottom because eventually I'm going to crop over them. So I basically 
um, picked the amount of distortion that I liked, which again you can see is slightly less than this, which is really curvy. I picked what I liked, um, adjusted it so it's a bit less bendy, and disabled things like the vignette, which I didn't want because again I'd already graded it, and then I exported. Um, so we go back into Premiere and we're going to look at the Gorilla Grain, which I applied, and that's the Gorilla Grain website. So back into Premiere, this is my final timeline now. This is the grain. I use Fine Grain Muddy, and then I used Fine Grain Clean as well. Um, so I had Muddy for these bits, and then a cleaner texture here for some of these bits, and then back to Muddy again. Um, just cutting it up per shot. Some some shots it felt like too much to have it muddy, so I, I stuck with the clean stuff, but it all cuts really beautifully, and you can just see what it does there to the extra texture. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um, and the reason I get away with this is because I've denoised, so effectively the footage has no texture of its own, uh, and now I'm giving it texture back, but a lovely film scan texture. Um, and then I applied the logos and stuff like that. And the last thing is to slap the black bars on. And there we are. That's it. So to recap, I conformed the project from Avid in Resolve. Then I exported a single QuickTime. I went back into Premiere. I denoised it and cleaned up that 8-bit footage. Um, and then I went back into Resolve. I graded it using an Impulse LUT uh, grade as a base and then adding secondaries and power windows to suit. Um, and then I went through uh, After Effects and I used the Vashimorphic Anamorphic filter to give it that sort of special source. And then uh, I came back into Premiere, added Gorilla Grain and the bars and the final music and titles and stuff and exported. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Please uh, stick around for more. Stay tuned, hit subscribe. And if you've got any questions, do leave them below. Um, thanks again and I'll see you soon.